Hi there and welcome to Ready Creek Baptist Online Service. Really glad that you're able to be with us today. I'm David, I'm one of the pastors here. It's good to be back. I've been on holidays for the past couple of weeks down at Nelson Bay with Liesl. We had a great time just relaxing but also uh, catching up with family down there as well. Thank you very much to Robbie who's been preaching over the last couple of weeks. I'm really a couple of great sermons. In fact, he kicked off our monthly series of, of January on prayer. That's what we're focusing on this month. It's our annual tradition that throughout January each year, we preach on uh, on prayer, but we also have a number of prayer opportunities uh, as well. So thanks, Robbie, for kicking off last Sunday's topic on prayer. I'm going to continue on this theme of prayer, particularly some of the prayers, biblical prayers that are so needed today. I'll share more about that in just a moment. I also appreciate there are a number of you who cannot be at the service today at church at Ready Creek Baptist because of the present restrictions over this uh, weekend. Our thoughts are with you, but also with the medical team up in Brisbane as they work through uh, where these uh, viruses are spreading and, and so on. But it's good to be with you. Thanks for joining with us again uh, this morning. I want to read to you from Matthew and it's his version of the Lord's Prayer, found in Matthew chapter 6, and it says this, Jesus said, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I particularly want to look at the uh, verse um, in verse 10 where it says, Your kingdom Come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Would you please pray with me? Father God, as we enter into a new year that perhaps hasn't been as exciting as other new years, we come in utter dependence upon you, Lord, as we seek your will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We seek for your kingdom to come. Father God, with the pandemic still causing havoc around the world, we do pray that you will be with the scientists, the medical staff, our world leaders, as they work out a way forward. We thank you, Lord, that vaccines have been created, Lord. But we also pray that people need to turn to you. So, Father God, as we now look at your word, may your spirit speak into our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, since the building of the Tower of Babel, found in Genesis chapter 11, people have built empires from political leaders such as dictators, media tycoons that have built, well, media empires, through to church leaders who have strived to build their own little empires and not God's kingdom. When I was a child, I was into building cities, Lego cities. For birthdays and Christmases, I would receive buildings and cars and boats that help my city expand. I wanted to build an empire, <laughs> but my pocket money severely limited my ambition. It seems as though that there are those who have the ambition of building their own kingdoms for their own glory, such as the presidents of China, Russia, and even America. I've never forgotten the words of Abraham Lincoln, who honoured the soldiers that sacrificed their lives in order that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. John the Baptist and Peter the Apostle spoke about kingdoms. In his first sermon, John the Baptist preached, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Peter, in his first sermon, preached, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There was a sense of urgency the kingdom of God is here. And John the Baptist and Peter declared, repent, believe and be baptized. 
but so too did Jesus. In his first sermon, Jesus also preached, The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus taught about the kingdom of God. During his ministry years, Jesus taught his followers to pray for his kingdom when he said, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He often taught what the kingdom of God was like through parables. And then at the end of his ministry, after his resurrection, Jesus still spoke about it. Luke wrote, He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus spoke and prayed about the kingdom of God. At the end of his ministry, Jesus was still talking about the kingdom of God. However, after three years of teaching about the kingdom of God, the disciples still just didn't get it. Luke says, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? You see, his disciples were Jewish and over time they started to believe in a different kingdom. The Jews were also aware of being God's chosen people. They took that to mean that they were destined for special privilege and for worldwide domination. The whole course of their history proved that, humanly speaking, that could never be. Palestine was just a little country, not more than 200 kilometres long and 65 kilometres wide, which is roughly from here, is here in the Gold Coast at Reedy Creek, to Maroochydore on the Sunshine Coast, and from here out west to Bow Desert. <laughs> Palestine had its days of independence, but it had become subject to the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and then the Romans. So the Jews began to look forward to a day when God would break directly into human history and establish the world sovereignty of which they dreamt. They convinced of the kingdom in political terms and the Messiah as its king. Well, Jesus had a different idea of what God's kingdom would look like. His he first taught that the kingdom of God has arrived. He said in Mark 1 verse 15, The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Again, Jesus says in Luke 17 verse 21, The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, Here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your Mits. So, the kingdom of God is a present reality here and now. And so, when Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, he was teaching us that we should be praying for his kingdom to come now. Jesus also speaks about the kingdom of heaven, but only in Matthew's gospel. Most scholars believe that the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are synonymous with each other because in biblical days the Jews often refer to God as heaven and Matthew's gospel was particularly targeted to the Jews. We often think of a kingdom as a country, don't we? In fact, there are 27 countries around the world now that are officially known as the kingdom. Belgium is known as the Kingdom of Belgium. Denmark is known as the Kingdom of Denmark. Thailand is known as the Kingdom of Thailand. And there is the Kingdom of Norway and, of course, the United Kingdom of England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Now, in biblical days, because many Jews believe that God's kingdom will be a geographical kingdom, when Jesus declared that the kingdom of God is near, many Jews uh, showed great interest because they were waiting for the day that the kingdom of God will finally crush the old kingdom of Rome. They also believed that the Jewish people would have a prominent part in this coming kingdom under the leadership of their Messiah. But Jesus had other thoughts. He said in John 18, My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom does not have its origins here. So Jesus makes it clear what it isn't. The kingdom of God 
isn't a geographical place. The term kingdom means a political or territory unit ruled by a sovereign. The Greek word that is translated into English as kingdom more often means the activity of a king or queen rather than the territory that he or she rules. And the Aramaic word, which most scholars think that Jesus himself used, has this meaning. With this Greek and Aramaic and English translations of kingdom, we get the picture that it means rule or reign or authority. And so when Jesus said that the, king, that the coming of the kingdom of God, it is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. He was actually referring to God's reign within people's lives. When Jesus taught us to pray for his kingdom to come, we are praying for his reign and rule to be evident within nations, but also in the lives of people. This is the meaning of the kingdom of God. Jesus had a vision where he saw a society on earth where, God will, where God's will would be done as it is in heaven. That is what he taught us to pray. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the book of Acts, we see the message of the kingdom of God being preached Acts 8 verse 12, but they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God. Acts 14 verse 22, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Acts 19 verse 8, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. Acts 28 verse 23, he witnessed to them from morning till evening, explaining about the kingdom of God. And Acts 28 verse 31, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and, and without hindrance. <laughs> oh, the results of this proclamation of the kingdom of God saw tens of thousands come to faith as heaven touched people's lives through those who were healed, those who were repented, those who were baptized, those who were being cared for. Jesus did say that this would happen when he spoke about the kingdom of God being like a mustard seed, small at the beginning, but will grow to be such a large tree. The apostle Paul, he grasped the, the vision of this kingdom of God. He said in Romans 14 verse 12, uh, 17 that it is of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And in Corinthians, Paul says that the kingdom of God is living by God's power. When we think of what the kingdom of God is like and can do in people's lives, no wonder Jesus taught us to seek it and to pray for it. If there was ever a time to be seeking the kingdom of God and praying for it, it is now. We are living in such extraordinary times with the pandemic running rampant around the world. It is affecting big time our lives. The pandemic has almost silenced the continual rise in the political and social sphere of immorality. The very thing that Paul says will not be entering into the kingdom of God. Many facing difficulties with the global economic crisis, the, the continual issues of broken homes, terrorism, food shortages, slavery and secularization. Now is the time to be praying for God's kingdom to reign within people and nations. Church, in our month of prayer, pray for God's kingdom to come. Pray for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is the only answer, God, to reign in people's lives, including the lives of the leaders of our nations. Jesus imagined his kingdom on earth would show the fruits of love, righteousness, peace, justice and power in heaven his kingdom is perfect, 
free from mourning and pain and so on. If you can, try to imagine the kingdom that Jesus envisaged. I mean, imagine if Christians around the world allowed God to fully reign in their lives, including their wallets. And Christians everywhere gave generously back to God. Then churches would not have a money problem. They would have so much money to be able to plant, uh, to to finance the planting of, of new churches. The poor would be fed. The aged would be cared for and the homeless fed. Imagine if large numbers of people at this time came to faith in Christ Jesus and God reigned in their lives. If these means of new Christians obeyed even the Ten Commandments, then killings would be down, adultery would decrease, respect within families would grow, and integrity would be respected. Imagine if existing and new Christians understood that in God's kingdom, there is a new understanding of who they are in Christ, that we are forgiven, being freed from our past, and present hang-ups, that God looks at the heart, meaning that our children and our teenagers don't need to be pressured to outwardly look a certain way, that we all know with certainty our destiny, which gives us hope and peace when facing the issues of death. Church, I urge you to pray for God's kingdom to come, for His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's reign in people's life is our only hope. It is not found in violence and looting and raiding places like the White House. Like you, I was shocked to see this and extremely disappointed that even Christians took part. This is not the answer. Christians can protest and use their voice, but never through violence and terrorizing people. For the kingdom of God is of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray like we've never prayed before. Oh Lord, may your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Finally, I want to give anyone who are watching an opportunity to be part of God's kingdom. The kingdom of God was not simply at the heart of Jesus' agenda. It was his agenda. And his agenda was to get you into his kingdom. He paid the terrible cost by dying a sacrificial death so that we are forgiven for the sins that we have committed. He's also taught how we can enter the kingdom. Jesus told us, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Our part is to repent of our sins, believe that Jesus is God's only son and accept him as your Lord and Saviour. When you pray this, and because of what Jesus has done on the cross, Paul tells us what happens. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. That is the good news of Jesus Christ. At Reedy, our first value is we seek. It is based on Jesus' words. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Church, Let's seek first his kingdom and pray for his kingdom to come and watch as his promise be fulfilled and all these things will be given to you as well. As the King James Version of the Bible adds to the Lord's Prayer, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for watching today. And I just continue to encourage the church to pray. Pray like you've never done before for his kingdom to come, for his will to be done. How about we do that right now? Father God, we live in such 
changing times with this pandemic, with the rise of nationalism, with all sorts of issues that are occurring around the world and even in our own country. Lord, we pray desperately for your kingdom to come, for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh Lord, forgive us of our sins. We are truly sorry for the way that we have, we have led our countries, for the way in which we have led our own lives. Lord, come and reign in our lives. Help us to follow your will according to your Bible. Father God, I want to pray now. I want to pray, Lord, for those who want to be a part of your kingdom, your wonderful, beautiful kingdom. Lord, I just pray that as they accept that they are a sinner, that have fallen short of your glorious standard, as they accept that Jesus is their Lord and Saviour and repent of their ways, I pray now, Lord, that you would transfer them from, your, from the kingdom of darkness into your kingdom of light, the kingdom of your dear Son. Lord, thank you for that promise that you will do this. Thank you for the act of the cross, what you have done for us. So, Father God, come and reign in all of our lives. May we humbly seek you and seek your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.